here. Today I want to talk a little bit about the history and evolution of steering wheels. Obviously the very first car had a tiller, you know, kind of like on the back of a boat. But uh, then they came out with these uh, steering wheels and this is what came stock on my 58 Lister Corvette. And it is a beautiful, nardy wooden steering wheel. Looks gorgeous. But here's the thing. If I have a leather glove here and I want to relax my grip, and I'll tell you why you want to relax your grip here a little bit. If I were to relax my grip, my hand obviously would slide across it. And guys who were out there developing steering wheels at the time knew that. So what they wanted to do was increase the coefficient of friction between the hand and the wheel. Well, then came along leather. And what leather did was it gave it a breathable surface that did indeed give you a little bit better frictional coefficient or grip on the steering wheel. But you were still relying on friction, which meant you had to have grip tension on the steering wheel. And what happens is that tension is blocking the feedback you're supposed to be reading through the steering column, but that's another lesson. Well, they figured out that if leather could be wrapped on a steering wheel from manufacturing, what if we were to flip that inside out? and now have suede. Well, suede does increase the coefficient of friction. So that is where the conventional wisdom was when I showed up on the scene in 1993. And Emerson Fittipaldi invited me to his pit at the Indy 500, and we designed a plastic, a moldable plastic steering grip. So what it did was it literally grooved, added grooves here so his fingers could ride into the steering wheel. And what this did was it allowed him to relax his grip. And obviously in the course of a 500 mile race where these guys are getting so fatigued, they're losing seven pounds of, of weight in the course of this race. It made a pretty big difference. So much so that the fastest lap of the 1993 Indy 500 was the second to the last lap by Emerson Fittipaldi. Now think about that for a second. The fatigue is set in, but yet he still had the presence of mind and the, his, his ability to ride right up to the limit. As it turns out, the limit when driving is what we call the mu slip curve. In other words, slip meaning the way the tire is sliding, because the tire is trying to go in the direction you're pointing it, but the rear tires are driving the car forward, so it actually slips. The difference between where it's pointed and where it's going is called the slip angle. And the more you turn the wheel, the greater the slip angle. The more it's trying to go in the direction you're telling it, but it's really not able to do it, so it slips a little bit more. Well, as it turns out, the cornering force does indeed build as it begins to slip. And then all of a sudden it starts to go away. And the top of that mu slip curve is relatively flat. So you're, what you're trying to do is ride the top because you want maximum cornering force. Well, if it's relatively flat up there, how, if you've got a death grip on this thing, how are you supposed to read that feedback? Because the resistance you feel through the steering wheel is directly proportional to the amount of friction underneath the front tires by virtue of the fact that the contact patch is trailing the steering axis due to this thing called caster. I know that's a mouthful, but we'll talk about that later. The point is, he was able to relax his grip and ride right up to the top of the mu slip curve. Now I have another wheel around here, serial number 35, that I developed for myself. Think about this. On October 3rd, 1993, serial number 35 steering wheel was the wheel that I designed for my own car. It was my BMW at the time. And so it wasn't until I actually went out and tried this wheel on an on-ramp that I knew, like the palm of my hand, that I realized what was going on with these Indy car drivers out there buying this stuff off me, doing three and four wheels a race. It's funny, I gotta digress here for a second. Emerson Fittipaldi, when I went up to him in Milwaukee after the Indy 500, I put my head on the butcher block and I said, Emmo, do you think it helped? And he leaned forward, he looked at me and he says, it helped a lot. Well, as it would turn out, it would be October before I felt it for myself. It's a whole new world, there's a whole new paradigm out there waiting for you if you wanna put the energy in trying to optimize the man-machine interface. Persona Grip can help you do that.